Hey guys, it's Venom from VTG, and today we're going to answer a question that always comes across our minds when we build a new ship. How many reactors do I need to power everything I got? Well, our usual answer to that question is to plop like five reactors and fly away, but doing that can actually waste space. So this raises another question. How many thrusters can one reactor power? After doing many calculations, and believe me there was a lot, with all the variations of thrusters and power supplies, I have all the answers to that question. Let's take a look. So before we answer the question of how many thrusters a reactor can power, we first have to understand how much power is outputted by all three power blocks. So in front of us here we have three displays, and on all of them we have the values of the outputs of all three power blocks. So let's take a look at the first one. The first one, and by the way these are in acronyms, so don't worry, I'll read them out to you so you can understand. The first one we have is the large ship solar panel, and it outputs 120 kilowatts. And then we have the small ship solar panel, which outputs 30 kilowatts. Eh, not too much power coming out of it, but it's good for recharging batteries. Speaking of which, we have the large ship battery, which outputs 12 megawatts, and the small ship battery, which outputs 4.32 megawatts. So, a lot more power than the solar panels, and still very good to use for possibly as a main power source. Now moving on to the next value, we have the reactors. The large ship large reactor outputs 300 megawatts. That's a lot compared to the others. And the large ship small reactor outputs 15 megawatts, which is a little bit higher than the large ship battery, so that's very comparable, very nice. And then we have the small ship large reactor, which outputs 14.75 megawatts, which is interesting. It's more powerful than the large ship battery, and it's just a little bit less, literally a little bit less than the large ship small reactor. So I found that pretty interesting. And then the small ship small reactor outputs 500 kilowatts, so that's about five times as much as the large ship solar panel. So, pretty interesting facts. So we're back, and here's a chart that I made. Uh, it's a comparison between a few power units. So, a comparison between the reactors and the batteries. And I did it for the large ships and the small ships. So here, we have the large ship values. And on the top we have 1 megawatt equals 1000 kilowatts, that's just to give you an idea of uh, the power outputs of some things compared to others. And on the second row we have our values as we saw before. On the third row we have our value comparison, so let's take a look. So 1 large ship large reactor equals 20 large ship small reactors. 1 large ship large reactor equals 25 large ship batteries and one large ship small reactor equals 1.25 large ship batteries. So that's pretty interesting. And then moving on, we have our, our little thing at the top there. Second row, our values. Third row, one small ship large reactor equals 29.5 small ship small reactors. And then one small ship large reactor equals 3.5 small ship batteries. And one small ship battery equals 8.6 small ship small reactors. And I thought this would be cool as a comparison to see when you're building a ship if do you really have enough space to fit one small ship battery or do you have space to fit nine small ship small reactors. Depending on the shape of your ship it's going to vary but this will give you a comparison of how to compensate if you can't fit say a battery into your ship but you have plenty of space for say the small ship small reactors. So it's a good comparison so you don't lose power and you don't overload your ship. So now that we know the power output of the reactors, the batteries, and the solar panels at their optimal angle, we can finally take a look at the values of the thrusters. So we're going to be looking at the power input required for each thruster type, the ions, the hydrogens, and the atmospherics. So down here are the values for their maximum input. This is how much power they'll be taking from the reactors. So let's start with the ions. The small ship small ion would require 201 kilowatts. Small ship large ion would require 2.4 megawatts. The large ship small ion would require 3.36 megawatts. And the large, oh, typo, the large ship large ion would require 33.60 megawatts. Moving along to the hydrogens. We have the small ship small hydrogen would require 170 kilowatts. The small ship large hydrogen would require 800 kilowatts. The large ship small hydrogen would require 1.70 megawatts. 
and the large ship large hydrogen would have required 10 megawatts. And finally, the atmospherics. Small ship, small atmospheric would require 701, what's with the one? Kilowatts? The small ship, large atmospheric would require 2.40 megawatts. And the large ship, small atmospheric would require 2.36 megawatts. And the large ship, large atmospheric would require 16.36 megawatts. So we finally know the maximum input of all the thruster types. So we can take those numbers, divide it by the reactor's outputs and the battery's outputs, and that gives us the answer to how many thrusters a reactor or battery can power. So I have my answers here down in the blocks down below. Let's take a look at them. Starting off with the ions. One small ship small reactor can power two small ions or two small hydrogens or one small atmospheric. A small ship large reactor can power 73 small ions, or 86 small hydrogens, or just 29 small atmospherics. A small ship battery can power 21 small ions, or 25 small hydrogens, or 8 small atmospherics. So those are the values of the small ship small thrusters. Let's take a look at the small ship large thrusters now. So, an interesting note, a single small ship small reactor cannot power either a large ion, large hydrogen, or large atmospheric. It would take five small ship small reactors to power an ion, or two reactors to power a large hydrogen, or four to power a large atmospheric. So, moving on, a small ship large reactor can power six large ions, or it can power 18 large hydrogens, or it can power 6 large atmospherics. A small ship battery can power 1 large ion, or 5 large hydrogens, or 1 large atmospheric. So those are the small ship thrusters. Let's move on to the large ship small thrusters. So a single large ship small reactor can power 4 small ions or eight small hydrogens, or six small atmospherics. A large ship large reactor can power 89 small ions, or 176 small hydrogens, or 127 small atmospherics. That's a lot. Moving on, the large ship battery can power three small ions, or it can power seven small hydrogens, or it can power five small atmospherics. So those are the large ship small thrusters. Moving on to the last one, the large ship large thrusters. This is where it gets interesting. So a large ship small reactor cannot power a single large ion. It would take about three small reactors to power just one of them. It can power one large hydrogen, but it cannot power a single large atmospheric. It would take about two small reactors to power just one of them. Moving on, the large ship large reactor can power 8 large ions, or it can power 30 large hydrogens, or it can power 18 large atmospherics. And finally, the large ship battery cannot power a single large ion, it would take about 3 of them to power just one. It can power one large hydrogen, but it cannot power a single large atmospheric, it would take about 2 of them to power just a single one of them. Well guys, I learned a lot from this, and I hope you did too. If you liked the video, you know what to do. But if not, write in the comments down below and tell me how you think I can improve. It'll help me a lot to make a better video for you. Well, that's the end of this video. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Have a great day.